right. In the doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sitting in tonight, so you got me. Manisha's away. Uh, my first time, so I'll try not to mess it up too badly. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Oh, this is a regular planning commission meeting. See, I already blew it. Uh, regular planning commission meeting of Thursday, March 19th, 2015. I got that right. We got a roll call? Thank you. Um, Commissioner Spears? Present. Commissioner Pevsner? Here. Commissioner Pascal? Here. Commissioner Fryman Hunt? Here. Commissioner Buckles is absent. Vice Chair Goldstein? I am here. And Chair Desai <coughs> is also absent. We have a quorum on the dais. Uh, have an approval of the agenda. A motion that we approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. We have an approval of the minutes of March 5th, 2015. I will move that we approve them. I'll second. All in favor? I will recuse I was not here. Well, we were sorry that you weren't here. Uh, anyway, we have a vote. Aye. Good. Aye. Uh, yeah. we, I vote aye too, so we passed that too. Great. So at this time, we would like to open the floor to comments on any topic not on this evening's agenda. Uh, and we have a lovely audience tonight, and I think they're here for the agenda. But if you have anything that you'd like to talk about, come on down now and uh, try to keep it to four minutes, but we'll give you a little more time if you need it. The line is forming, <laughs> getting longer. And evaporating. <laughs> and going once, going twice. I think we're going to go on to the agenda, but thank you. Okay, uh, so the sole item on the agenda tonight is the public hearing for conditional use permit 1406. Would you like to take us through that? Um, yes, um, contract planner, uh, contract senior planner, Amy Schwimmer, will um, present the staff report. Good evening, Acting Chair Goldstein and Planning Commission. I'm Amy Schwimmer with the City's Planning and Community Preservation Department. Agenda item number one is Conditional Use Permit 14-06. This is a request for a conditional use permit to operate a kennel in an existing dog daycare and grooming business in the manufacturer zone located at 31 East Montecito Avenue. The applicant's proposing to board five to 20 dogs no changes to the existing building are proposed. No increase in the number of employees is proposed with this request. Currently, there are four employees on staff at the Shabby Dog. The project site is comprised of four single-story buildings, predominantly used for commercial businesses and workshops. Consistent with the manufacturer's zone do zoning designation, the business began as a dog collar manufacturer in 2010. In 2013, the business expanded into the current building, and the uses included retail sales of dog collars, dog grooming, daycare, and overnight boarding. A code enforcement complaint was filed in October of 2014, and the applicant submitted a conditional use permit application for the operation of a kennel at the site in, to, in December of 2014. The staff report for this request states that the use has been stopped. Staff would like to correct that statement. The application was submitted before the winter holidays in 2014 in an effort to accommodate the business and the clients who had made reservations for the winter holiday. The applicant was verbally allowed to continue the kennel use. In an effort to accommodate the business further, staff, con staff continued to process the permit and bring the permit before the Planning Commission as soon as possible. <coughs> it should be noted that dog collars are currently manufactured off-site. Retail sales of the collars are in the uh, lobby of the Shabby Dog as well as online. The manufacturing zone allows all uses in the commercial zone. The commercial zone requires the approval of a conditional use permit for animal boarding. Pursuant to City of Sierra Madre Municipal Code, kennels in any zone are required approval of a conditional use permit. This is a vicinity map that shows the location of the project site in yellow. 
you can see Montecito Avenue and Baldwin. And this is the public parking lot on the corner of Montecito and Baldwin. I apologize for the amount of information on this slide. This slide shows the location of the shabby dog on the project site, which is here in this building. The project, or this project site slide shows the other businesses that are in operation on site. You can see that most of the uses are artisan workspace uses, which have little to no clients and very little parking impacts. So again, here's the shabby dog, and they access right here is their lobby off of Montecito Avenue. Here is a driveway to the rear of the project site that's mostly used by employees as well as delivery vans for the florist. The florist workshop's located here, and the florist is here, and they only work by appointment only. There's also a graphic design office in this location, a small art studio here, and most of the other uses on the site, again, are artisan workshops. Here's the floor plan of the shabby dog. You can see the front entrance, which is off of East Montecito Avenue. This is the reception area, grooming and bath for the dogs. And this is cage-free bo boarding for the grooming of the animals. These are three separate rooms. But the doors are open and there is a staff member back here with the animals. The cages for the boarding are here along this wall as well as here along this wall. These are the findings for the conditional use permit that need to be met per the city's municipal code. Staff has made these findings for the request before you tonight. The findings are in the staff report as well as in resolution 15-02. Under the California Environmental Quality Act, this is a class one categorical exemption because existing facilities are being used. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve conditional use permit 14-06. That concludes staff's presentation. I'm happy to answer your questions and the applicant's also here to answer your questions. Thank you. And there's never too much information on a slide. <laughs> Um, any questions for staff? Maybe what the nature of the complaint was that motivated this? The nature of the complaint, as far as I know, was regarding that uh, dogs were being boarded overnight without the proper use permit. Really? Somebody was obviously well informed. City code. Impressive. Okay. Any other questions from staff, for staff? Would you like to hear from the applicant briefly? The applicants here, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, my name is Sandy Duvall. Um, I've been a longtime business owner in Sierra Madre for over 20 years now. Um, some of you know me from Sierra Fitness. Um, I opened up my dog business just as a pure love of pets and people know me in town as being a dog lover. Um, I also have a very creative side so my the first what it, how I started this business was actually being a designer of pet products. It just slowly evolved into the whole dog business which then became a retail store because um, we started online selling dog collars all over the country and then I started these collars are being made in Sierra Madre which is a cool thing for our community too um, so then we we wanted to open it up to the public here to, and a lot of the dogs in this town where our collars actually um, so my dream was to actually just have a little retail store in Sierra Madre kind of off the deep beaten path to support our um, online store and then just one thing evolved into the other and um, we started grooming then we start doing some light daycare and then throughout the years then we people start requesting us to do some overnight care um, on a small level because myself I'm a dog owner and my experience with boarding has always been if I especially if I go in a long-term place is that my dogs are caged and, and and traumatized so I wanted to create an environment which is a little bit more home environment which as you see that property is so 
old and historical in its own way. Um, that's what we've created there. So we do it in a small way, and we try to keep it in a home environment. Someone is there 24 hours a day um, to watch these dogs. Some of them are caged. Some are, it's always on the request of the clients that come in. If they want multi-dogs to be together in an area, we accommodate that. But again, we're a very small, small facility. We don't take 100 dogs. Um, during the holidays, we may take 20 dogs. But on an average, we could have two dogs a night. We could have five dogs. So again, it's, it's kind of a little bit more like a home Sierra Madre environment. And the people of Sierra Madre actually love our service. Um, as, as you can see, we have a lot of supportive people here tonight. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Are the dogs always inside or are they outside part of the time? We have indoor outdoor. So we do have um, we do have two yard areas that they go in and out, but in the evenings they're inside. They're not left outside at all. Mm -hmm. And um, we as you, we have never had a complaint over the last three or four years of even our day business, which is daycare and grooming, which dogs are around barking more so than even in the evening. We've never had any complaints so far um, as far as no, uh, being a burden or, or annoyance to the community. And from what time are they um, inside or outside? I guess I'm thinking. Well, we open at 7 and we close at 7 as far as people picking up their dogs. That's grooming and daycare. Mm -hmm. So our doors are shut at 7 p.m. So after that, they'd be inside. After that, they're inside. Um, Periodically throughout the night, they'll take them outside just to go to the restroom, but none of them are left outdoors. It's total indoor boarding. Thank you. I have a question. The person that lives there with the dogs at night, is that the that last room at the very end? Um, they don't live there. They're just on staff there. So they come in, and they're there 24 hours, and they're up all night watching the dogs. Okay. Yeah. It's... It's an evening, it's, an, it's a night shift job. Okay. Any other questions the applicant? No? Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and we do, for the people watching at home, have quite a few people here, about two thirds of a house, and we did receive about a half a dozen letters of support in the packet um, and no letters of complaint. So with that, I will open the public hearing if you would like to come down and say a few things, come on down to the podium, uh, state your name, the street that you live on, and try to keep it under four minutes if you can. Hi, Council. My name is Sam Bernardo, and I am a resident. Uh, I live probably the closest person to the shabby dog, diagonally at 70 East Montecito been there about two and a half years. Um, I also have a dog that is groomed at the shabby dog. But um, as a resident, I've never experienced any noise or traffic complaints, and I'm there pretty much all the time. So I, I would recommend that the council uh, approve the CUP as it exists. Any questions you have of me? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on down. My name is Ann Johansson. I live right next door to Sam. And um, really ditto what Sam said. It, it's charming having them there, and I've never had a problem. I take my dogs there, and my dog got her teeth brushed there today, even. So, um, but anyway, I just 100% support what Sandy's doing and have nothing else to say except for I'm for it. <laughs> Thank you. So I heard him say, Happy's mom. Yeah, they see, that's why we love them, because they know us, they know our dogs, they take really good care of them. I'm Lisa Cole, a Sierra Madre resident, property owner, 100 block East Montecito. And of all the things that have gone on in Montecito over the 25 years that I've been there, this is probably one of the least obtrusive. And that's shocking to say, because there's lots of dogs there. 
but um, I almost never hear them barking. My neighbor's dogs bark much more than the dogs when I'm passing Shabby Dog or when I'm going in and out of Shabby Dog. And I've used them. Uh, my dog, Happy, loves it there. And I would be very sad if I wasn't allowed to take her there anymore. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Ellen Burry. I'm the director of uh, communications with the Kensington across the street. We have a therapy dog there. We also have several residents that have puppies and it's really important for us to be able to tell them as they move in if they get ill and have to go to the hospital that we have somewhere locally we can send their pets and also we have a local um, business here that can take care of, of shampooing and grooming the pets. So this is an important business for us to have here in Sierra Madre. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So your, the residents at Kensington ha can have an animal with them? Absolutely, unless it's a pit bull or something dangerous. Ah, okay. So <laughs> we have, as I think you probably know, two memory care neighborhoods in our community. And nationally, there's been a great deal of studies done, and we know that pets, especially dogs, are very, very helpful to help with these memory issues and to soothe the residents. Hmm. What's the name of your therapy dog? Forest. Great. I'm sure you've seen pictures of him in all of our marketing. <laughs> Thank you. Sandy takes excellent care of Forest. He got away from <laughs> us one day, and they found him down the street around the corner and knew exactly where he needed to be brought back to. <laughs> Sandy, you can use some of this video as a commercial <laughs> if you, <laughs> royalty free, because no one's asked. Any other comments, questions? Yes. I just want to speak in support of Shabby Dog. I live, uh, my name is Barbara Childers. Um, I live in uh, West Hollywood. I work in Alhambra and I drive all the way to shabby dog because they're great and they take care of our dogs and it's a it, I'm very supportive of them and they've been wonderful with my dog who uh, I just adopted a year and a half ago and I was very concerned with him because he has separation anxiety and this has been a lifesaver for me so love shabby dog it's going to be a very long commercial <laughs> Hi, my name is Megan Barr. I live at 660 Valle Vista, and I speak on behalf of my dog, Buddy, <laughs> who has been visiting the shabby dog for two years. And besides just like the wonderful grooming and the daycare, I feel that everyone at the shabby dog is very um, professional and savvy, and they understand um, not only the physical care of the dogs, but the emotional care of the dogs. And my dog is a little tricky because he is a rescue and so he thrives in that environment and um, I feel like they supported me in the tricky transition period of getting our dog um, acclimated to life in our home and so it was very helpful having the daycare there while um, maybe our house was being cleaned because the dog doesn't like our house cleaners and has various issues. But um, I really think that um, perhaps Colin would not have allowed us to keep Buddy if it wasn't for the shabby dog. No. <laughs> we love My name is Linda Marshall, and I live at 718 West Montecito. And I like hanging out in downtown a lot. And I have noticed, have you noticed there's a lot of dogs down there? These people are transforming the community. And I've had people tell me that one of the reasons they like going to downtown Sierra Madre is because of all the dogs. And there is just this wonderful community feeling. And yeah, well, you know, the dogs aren't necessarily so excited to see each other some of the times but we're always thrilled to see them and I feel like Sandy's business has been really instrumental in um, the vitality and the vibrations of downtown so thank you thank you
Hi, I'm Leisha Gariola. This is Nikki Gariola. We live at 365 Auburn and we support Sandy's business. It's an amazing business. I, I think it's great because it keeps jobs in Sierra Madre, uh, money being spent in Sierra Madre. Otherwise, we'd have to go to PetSmart, places like that. We don't want to go there. We want to support Sierra Madre. And um, Sandy helped me find a rescue dog, and it's the best dog we've ever had, Frosty Bear. She's, um, we've actually found a dog and been able to call Sandy in the middle of the night and go, hey, help me, I've got this dog, we found it, and she found it at home, and she's just got a heart of gold, and I can't imagine not having Shabby Dog there. Come down to the podium. I'm sorry. Sam we have to let the people at home hear you. Okay. Sam Bernardo again. Kelso, I think we can all see where this is headed. And while everyone has the right to free speech, the NCAAs are on. And I urge, <laughs> I urge this council to let's put a stop to this and just vote yes and let me go watch my game. <laughs> Please. Well, that could be presumptuous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a bit, but. Uh, uh, Okay. And, and we're yeah. the commission. The yeah. council is a whole other group entirely. <laughs> <laughs> come over and watch the game with me. Anybody else like to come down and turn this commercial into an infomercial? <laughs> oh, we have more. We we're going to leave the public hearing open. Um, I can't. Okay, my name is Mary Hudson, and I live on Esperanza in Sierra Madre. I've been with Sandy and the Shabby Dog for many, many years. Um, and while I can echo everything everybody has already said, the one thing I want to say is a few years ago I had double knee replacement surgery and I have two dogs. And I had, that was my biggest concern is what was I going to do with my dogs during my recovery because I barely could take care of myself, much less walk and, and take care of the dogs. And Sandy and crew were just phenomenal in helping me get through my recovery by helping me with something that was my greatest concern. So again, they offer so many services to so many people in so many ways. Thank you. Okay, we're halfway done. <laughs> Anybody else want to come down and speak? Going once, going twice, I will bring it back to the podium and open it up for discussion amongst us. I'd like to kick off. I will. I'll start. Um, in order to approve this, we have to make certain findings among which are, the only thing that would concern me about this use in that area are odors and noise, which are the things that annoy neighbors about dogs and other pets, typically speaking. There haven't been any complaints about this. The people in the neighborhood seem fine with it. It seems to be a useful um, use that fits in with our needs. So, so if we look at the Findings, it's the, the site is proposed is adequate in size, and we've obviously seen that it has operated effectively in, in, in the past. It has sufficient access to the streets. Uh, it is not necessary, does not necessarily interfere with the use, possession, enjoyment of the surrounding properties. We've, we've seen that. It's, I believe it's on the old red car turnaround site. Um, there's a demonstrated need, obviously. We're having more people here than if we were putting a nuclear waste facility. <laughs> <laughs> And the use will, as a location, be consistent with the objectives of the general plan. That's true, and the pu and that the public interest, convenience, and necessity is is addressed. And it looks like that is being done as well. So I can approve this project. Great, thanks. Leave me anything to say, Bob? Sure. <laughs> I'm fine. My question is: Is twenty even the max number of dogs are? The applicant is nodding. Yes. yes. So 20, okay. And I'm sure you've got the waste disposal for 20 large dogs all taken care of? Yes. Okay. My only concern with it is I think that's supposed to be an artisan area. I don't know if a dog kennel is an artisan type thing. Is that what that Ms. Montecito is supposed to be? Um, I can address that. Well, that, that is the name of the land use. Um, however, the, um, the ordinance that uh, implements that um, land use allows for uh, that kind of use uh, by reference to the commercial zone ordinance. It allows all the uses in the commercial zone, including uh, dog grooming, uh, veterinary clinics, um, and boarding requires a CUP. Um, and uh, also, um, the municipal code also allows um, various uses anywhere in the city, in any zone, pursuant to condition use permit. This is one of those uses. 
can't, can't that there is a CUP. That is correct. And so it's that, which is why they're here. If, whether they were at where they are now or anywhere in the town, we, there right. would be a CUP. It would require a CUP. And would the CUP address his concern about the number of dogs uh, boarded there? Uh, again, that could be a condition of approval. I mean, if you you know if you find that you, there should be a limit to the number, that could be a condition. But it does. It's not n nothing inherent in the CUP that would require you to approve a maximum number. Okay. You have a dog. I my dog. We just put my dog down. Oh. So, so believe me, I understand the whole thing. Did you have your um, dog groomed? I would only say uh, if you're going to groom dogs, maybe you groom them artistically. <laughs> and that would, that, would, that would cover that up. And I was going to say, um, if you've my, had your... My only question is, and we've done this before with other things I know, when you say 20, okay, if we can keep it towards that number, I realize maybe once in a while, everybody in town is going out of town for Thanksgiving, maybe you got 30 dogs there. But it's just one of those things where maybe we want to be able to keep the number down. And I can hear a lot of complaints from the members of the town here. We thought... We thought the cat, the cats people had come to talk about the dog grooming. So, but uh, no, I'm fine with it. it. It is as much art as it is science. <laughs> Some of the dogs are more receptive to it than others. So. Um, I concur that all <clears throat> the findings have been met. My only concern, having seen the room filled tonight, now that we know that your business is going to explode, is do you have adequate parking? Uh, for loading and unloading, so just keep an eye on that as your business continues to grow, that uh, people understand that's a temporary space there in front. But other than that, I have no concerns, so I will ask for a motion on the panel. So move. And a second. A second. And in favor? Aye. 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 I believe that you have your CUP. I, I do want to note, though, that there is a 14-day appeal period, um, just so that the applicant... Well, assuming you can get through the 14-day appeal period and this body can block for you, you will have your seat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. And you can go watch basketball now. You're going to miss the best part of the... Okay, while you're leaving, if anybody has any final comments to the podium on subjects not, this is second time we're opening. Shh. Anybody else want to come down and talk? I am opening to public comment on non shabby dog issues. And there is not any, so I will bring it here to the Planning Commission. Any comments or questions? No, no, no. no. But we're used to it. No, we just need to be quiet we're, so we can finish our meeting. We're really close, yeah. Any questions, concerns? No? Good. Staff? Thank you. Um, just uh, letting you know that your next meeting is April 2nd, and there are two items on the agenda, a conditional use permit um, for over 4,000 square feet, and uh, the adaptive reuse of 186 West Highland, which is the church uh, property on the corner of Hermosa and Highland. That's coming before you as well. It's an adaptive reuse of that building for um, low to moderate income um, multifamily use. Well, that's taken quite a while to come around. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is yeah. finally coming before you. Years. Yeah. So. That's good. That's it. That's all I have. That's it. Uh, I don't know if we hit a record, but we got close. 7.30. And if you want to watch basketball, this is a good time to do it. And we are adjourned. Thank you.